we are now going to use prime factorization to simplify radical expressions. Not every expression simplifies completely. And so what we want to do is break it down and see what can be simplified versus what can't be simplified. And the way we do that is prime factorization. So we start with 150. We break the 150 down. However, we see it and I see 10 and 15, which is 2 and 5 and 3 and 5. We then write this as 2 to the first times 3 to the first times 5 squared, all underneath that square root. Now, any powers that are 2 or higher can be reduced, but they have to be reduced in pairs. So this 5 squared says 1's going to come out, a single 5 escapes, but a 2 to the first and a 3 to the first have to stay in because there's not enough 2's or enough 3's to come out, and 2 times 3 is 6. So we're looking for what pairs can come out and taking them out, but leaving everything else in. And anything that comes out multiplies together. Anything that stays in multiplies together. So let's look at another example. Suppose I have the cube root of 297b to the fourth. Well, we start by looking at the 297, and this breaks down. 9 goes into it 33 times. 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 goes into 9. 9 goes into 2 plus 7. So that's how I knew the 9 did. Then I just did the division to get the 33. 9 is 3 and 3. 33 is 3 and 11. There are three threes. I'm looking for sets of three. So a single three makes it out. But that 11 stays trapped. Variables work a little bit differently. We can divide this out into b cubed times b to the first, separating the powers of 3 and then whatever's left over. So here, 3 get out, but become a single one on the outside, but it leaves a single b on the inside. And we just make sure this is all connected by multiplication. So we get 3b cube roots of 11b as our answer. As a final example, suppose we have the fourth root of 224, s to the eighth, t to the seventh. Well, let's break 224 down. I see 2, which leaves 112, which leaves another 2 and a 56, another 2 and a 28, a 2 and a 14, and a 2 and a 7. I'm looking at a fourth root, so one, two, three, four twos, escape is one, but that leaves a two and a seven inside. So inside the fourth root, I still have two times seven, or fourteen. I have s to the eighth, and s to the eighth can be broken up as s to the fourth times s to the fourth. Both of those are perfect fourth roots, so both of them let a single s out, and we're left with s squared. Or 8 divided by 4 is 2. t to the seventh, though, becomes t to the fourth times t to the third. So a single t gets out, but it leaves 3 inside. And here is our final answer. So by using prime factorization, we are quickly and easily able to see what's able to come out and what's not.